hello. Ooh, this is a new view. <laughs> I like the... Oh my god, my armpits are so hairy. I like the other view because it's like tall. I like to be able to see the top of my head and stuff. But whatever. <laughs> um... <laughs> Now I just take up the whole freaking screen. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know why the quality is so crappy. Like, this is a newer MacBook. Like, why is it so grainy? I don't mean it. Anyway, maybe someday people are going to be able to assist me <laughs> in making these videos a little better, but... Um, not like an assistant that I can pay for. I just mean suggestions in the comments. Oh God. I can just imagine some people that they're going to say like, Oh God, you think you're like going to be a millionaire or something? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> if, um, if just watching someone's like YouTube content can possibly make them money though, that's pretty cool. And my long-term goal is to work and I want to be able to have a pension and have all the things in life and the security and the benefits and the sick days and all of that. So that is what I'm aiming for. I'm not going to, you know, try my luck with YouTube as a whole career. It's just that, um, like in the meantime, like I was saying before, like being off work in this like limbo period, but ideally like it would be pretty amazing if I could get my jewelry business off the ground and then do this on the side because I do know somebody who um was I mean his content was like very educational but he uh, was making like I don't know an extra that was a grand a month just doing it on the side even though it was, I'm sure, very time consuming and required a lot of effort. But an extra grand a month is like pretty awesome. <laughs> so who knows like what will happen here. Oh, it's opposite, so it's like confusing my brain. <laughs> anyway, um, whew. so I don't know. Am I going to be able to record while I read this Facebook stuff. Let's see. Oh, I put my, see, this is how computer illiterate I am. I like for a lot of my life, I didn't really need to use, well, after college I was, oh, I didn't even say I was a dental assistant outside of high school. Um, but that's another, uh, whole video all on its own. And I didn't, I only did that in total for maybe like three years because like a year of school and maybe two years of working and that was it. And But you know, three years of someone's life is pretty significant. Like, so I don't want to say that like, there's still a lot to take away from that. And I am proud of myself that I was able to like go to college and do that, even though it was like really brutal because Oh my god, my dog keeps sighing. She's like, can you stop talking? I'm trying to nap. <laughs> Jeez. I think she's just not feeling well, though, actually. But, um... So... Maybe... Oh, that's better. I guess. Anyway, um... Yes, yeah, so now I realize I can read this and talk with you, I think. Ooh. Is it still going? Let me test it. Okay, 431. Yeah, I guess it's still rolling. Okay. Let's see. I want to be able to see myself only if there's like an issue because like my like what I was saying about my iPhone it makes no sense like like I removed all the videos from yesterday for example which was like a lot and right now I'm only at like 
like maybe 15 minutes worth of video and it's not letting me record anymore like is this like some scam to get us to upgrade our phones or something like lots of conspiracies with iPhone but it just doesn't make sense since I've had this phone for two years I had 9,000 videos and photos and suddenly I'm thinking I'm doing myself a favor by deleting everything and and then I still don't have room so I guess I'm going to be recording on here when every now and then okay now and then is like one of my favorite movies <laughs> I love a million movies but that is one so let's delete some of this it's like distracting alrighty oh. okay there I am in the corner oh that's terrible oh. <laughs> look at oh. by the way I like I've been I'm pretty much stalled on the scale and I think well I haven't been as active this week but um maybe too much sourdough bread <laughs> after this I'll have to get that keto bread anyway um yeah so I think I was in the middle of saying that after pouring my guts out about like being autistic and yeah, like maybe it was a little harsh to the delivery or something just about I don't know, I was just angry, but I only got like two comments from people in my life. One of them was like my neighbor who I've only known for like a year and then the other was um like a really important long-term friend and I'm glad and I had some likes, but it's like, I don't know, maybe I did get some messages as well, like, like Facebook Messenger, but, um, I just thought like, like nine likes and two measly comments when someone's, I don't know, I guess Facebook isn't as popular as it once was and not everyone spends a lot of time on there and I certainly don't either, but I felt purposely ignored by certain people and it really hurt my feelings like it just felt like they thought oh you're full of shit or you're trying to like just I don't know be a part of something or I don't know but um let's move on from that so that was my first main And then I was sharing a lot of different autistic posts. Like, oh. And then PTSD as well. I was sharing some about that. Ah, I'm just looking through some of these photos. I have a lot of fun stories to tell you someday. Like, um. I was kayaking when I first moved here and uh, I came across whales, like actual whales. I like was just dying to see whales from afar, but I went kayaking and I, I don't want to tell this story. Well, I guess I'm already here. I'll just tell the story. It's not that long, but I kind of just went out a lot further than I had intended. And, um, and at first I saw a huge sea lion and it just like came out of the water and its whole body was like this. And it was like, and then I, <laughs> I'm in the middle of the sea and I Google what is the weight of a sea lion? <laughs> Cause I'm like, holy shit. What if that thing comes up to me? What if it like jumps on the canoe or kayak? And did I even say kayak? I don't know. Anyway. So, <laughs> So that kind of freaked me out. That turned me around quick. <laughs> and it was like following me. Like, well, I don't know. Maybe it already planned to go that way. But it was keeping a distance. But it was like coming 
perfectly along with me. Like it wasn't going too far. It was, and then I steered it into danger because I came across whales. Oh, I hope it didn't get eaten. Oh my God. That's so morbid. I never really thought about that much until now, but <laughs> fuck, <laughs> I'm going to cry <laughs> about this. Um, Anyway, so I get to this point where it's like, I have to go around this corner to get back to where I live. And I can't, like, it, I hate how things are like backwards on this, but so I'm coming this way and all of a sudden I see two whale watching boats and I'm like, oh my God, they have to be near. So, so I'm like, just, and their engines were turned off and they were like sitting still. So I thought, Oh wow, they are close. So I got around the corner, thankfully, like they were maybe, I don't know how many hundreds of meters, not many, <laughs> um, away. And, uh, I'll have to insert a photo. It's really cool. Like I took a photo and let me finish the story. And then anyway, um, that's how my brain works. Very complicated. <laughs> but so I got around the corner and I look and I'm just waiting, 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 thinking, oh my God, where are they? And all of a sudden, like two huge dorsal fins like came out of the water next to each other. And it was like, they're pretty darn tall. And it just looked massive, even though this boat was right behind them with like, I don't know how many it can carry, like 50 people or like, I don't know if it was two levels. I can't remember. I do have the photo. It's just like from afar, but it's a pretty big boat. So when you see these two massive like dorsal fins come out, it like really freaked me out. I thought I do want to see whales, but I don't want to see them <laughs> up close. And like, and that was a trippy thing about kayaking, like in the sea is that like, you could see straight down until you got like into deeper water but I kept thinking what kind of things am I gonna see out here and it would kind of make me fearful because I was out there by myself I just thought like what if a whale passed me like I'd probably panic and fall out of the canoe and die <laughs> like, uh. anyway so I'm here at this point and I'm waiting looking and finally I see that and it was just so awesome but I started like getting freaked out inside and I like started paddling towards the the seaweed thinking that the <laughs> it would protect me somehow because there was like tons of seaweed like right by the shore and and uh anyway it was a really cool experience but it was like scary and um I'm gonna insert the photo but you can't really see as just like photos will never do the well at least an iPhone camera will never do like the true image justice. Like it looks a lot further than it is. And, but you will see that they were there and I was there. And just because I saw two fins doesn't mean it was just two whales. It was probably like a whole pod. <laughs> so yeah, that's my cool story. And you know, living in such a beautiful place, I do have the opportunity to go out and do that again. But I think I was like a little traumatized from that, like not to keep using traumatized, but I, it did freak me out. And, <laughs> but also around that time, like it was kind of the end of summer and, uh, it got a lot cooler and then we moved. So it, yeah, I didn't, get to, I didn't really I haven't gone for a while and maybe it doesn't have so much to do with that but anyway back to autism see you can go on a 20 minute tangent about something completely unrelated just by seeing a photo it's like oh I see a photo and I have to talk about that photo I can't just move on <laughs> oh People are probably going to one day mention about this line on my nose and I don't know, but I think it probably has something to do with being like, well, for starters, just like this is hereditary, but the line, I think it has to do with, I don't know how to say this with like, it's not funny at all, but, um, like 
it's probably from being really sad a lot in my life. Like, look at, if I, well, frown. So mad, disappointed, sad. That's probably why that line is there. So if you want to make fun of me for it, well, by all means. But just know that what you're laughing at and making fun of is not okay. And making fun of people's appearance generally isn't okay anyway, but... Okay, back to this. So, I just saw a little piece. I found like a tiny piece of cobalt. Cobalt. I can't say that. Co cobalt blue sea glass. And that was awesome. And I went to Tofino. Here's. Oh. So, here's my second post starts off probably a little hostile as well because I was like feeling really rejected and hurt by some people who just ignored it and didn't reach out and just people who have like who really were there for you like have celebrated birthdays and just for them to suddenly not show any interest in this part of your life like it just felt like they thought that's not true or I don't know but anyway I just put for anyone doubting me and my diagnosis or general genuinely curious here are just some of the issues I struggle as a person with autism ADHD anxiety depression and more mostly going to focus on autos autism eye contact people have made subtle or not so subtle comments to me about this since I was young it's not that I can't do it. I could force myself to look into someone's eyes, but the feeling is so intense and actually physically uncomfortable in some way. I don't know how to explain. On the other extreme, sometimes I can stare too much when I'm trying to show respect and give my full attention, but mostly this just happens if I zone out. I don't know the proper term, but I get flooded with a lot of me memories or images when talking to someone or just really any time throughout the day sometimes I use these memories to try to relate to people I guess it makes me look self-centered in a way instead of just listening to others I'm trying to show that I understand what they're feeling or going through good or bad like what I mentioned about that is that you know like when someone's telling you something really personal or deep they're going through and then the person is like oh yeah that happened to me because like nah, 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 nah. Like, I definitely did that a lot, and I didn't mean to do it in a way where it's like, me, 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 me. Oh my god, my fucking dog is... <laughs> I, truly, when I did do that in my head, it, like, when I hear, a, when I think about it, I'm like, yeah, that is kind of rude, and that sounds really, seems really self-centered, but um, it's just the way that our brains try to connect like we're trying to say I understand how what you're feeling and instead of just keeping it in a simple phrase it's like and it's not like I would say those things to like compare I was supposed to have jaw surgery when I was young and like these videos are making me so insecure about my chin I never knew how bad it was but I know a lot of this like goes down when I lose weight, so I'm hoping I can come to terms with my chin again. But um, all of a sudden, I'm like, "Wow, my chin's crooked!" <laughs> like I have a crooked smile. I have worse vision in this eye. I have a the crooked. Oh wait, no, this is the crooked side. This is my worse eye. I have a deviated septum. Oh, lately it's really bad. Maybe it's like seasonal allergies or something. Like I know my videos, I'm like, I don't know how long that's been going on. If it's because I, like I said before, I've never FaceTime. I have never taken videos and stuff. So I just don't know. I didn't even know really how I sounded or what my actions or anything. But, um, look, yeah, that was just another thing, like, growing up with a deviated fucking septum. Like, no wonder I was having struggling, 
like I was struggling in swim class because every time I'm swimming overhand, like the water's like going right up my nose and into my brain. <laughs> like that's how it felt like. <laughs> I just have to laugh about it. Like that's how I would be able to get through life. But it's not really that funny. Like I was inhaling and ingesting water through my nose because of my deviated septum when I could have easily just had a nose plug that would have helped me a lot but no I just I don't know the swim instructors didn't notice and my parents or no one cared like that's just how it feels sometimes but uh, yeah I'm just talking about my it's also maybe the lighting because the lighting's over here and this is but I don't know I was supposed to have jaw surgery and I don't know if it was like the third or fourth grade, but they asked me if I wanted to have it. And I'm like, I don't want to miss any school. So I didn't have jaw surgery because I didn't want to miss school. <laughs> like, why would they allow a kid to make a decision that could have like really changed? Like that could have really changed my physical appearance. It maybe could have changed like, well... So instead of having jaw surgery, I got braces, which helped with them because my like lower jaw was a little off just slightly or lower jaw, <laughs> the mandible, the maxilla. I could like name things around the face because dental assisting, even though it's been a while, but, uh, yeah, like I really, I, I'm glad I got braces and maybe having that surgery would have put me through hell when I was already experiencing too much at home as it was. So maybe it's for the best, but I do kind of wonder sometimes like what that would have been like if I had had that surgery. And here's a scar. I'll have to get into that another time. This, this scar is the start of, um, finding out about like the whole fibromyalgia thing believe it or not and then and the reason why I'll probably refer to the age 28 a lot in life is because or in these videos is because 28 is the year that I like really had a breakdown and was, was like the first time I reached out for support with my mental health and 28 kind of feels like the year that I just it's almost like a whole new beginning because it's a whole new journey of self-acceptance and and saying for like like I said about saying could have been worse could have been worse could have been worse well I'm suffering in silence and suffering like having suicidal ideations and I thought like I was really gonna do it one day and I was worried about that so I reached out finally and it was like it was the first time I f had any sort of like validation I guess and and then most recently getting like actually formally diagnosed was like kind of the last bit of validation I really needed and I don't really feel like I need any more it's just that those are kind of these are like pivotal moments and so next thing so So back to this, um, I don't know if I should be pausing this video or just let it roll on and I haven't recorded with, um, QuickTime player before. Like, why is it so, the quality is worse than my iPhone. Like, what's wrong with this camera? Brand new MacBook and that's what it looks like. Anyway, I have to take my dogs for a walk soon, I think. I'm just going to quickly read through this. So, I've been asked several times by doctors over the years about special interests when discussing my problems. And I used to say no right away because I didn't really think I ever had obsessions or knowledge the way some people do. Or I didn't think mine were interesting enough to others. But that turns out to be far from the truth. I have had... Endless collections, movie tickets, concert tickets, buttons, candles, magnets, coffee mugs, CDs, movies, and more. 
And when I was in elementary school and into high school, I knew every single person's birthday and star sign. And I used to read about their star signs, their signs and see what characteristics matched up. So yeah, that was one of my like obsessions is I got this like book of birthdays in, in elementary school and I took it to school and I had like, I put everyone's birthday like on the pages and I was like reading about it and seeing if their characteristics lined up and and from there <laughs> Zena go drink some water she sounds like dehydrated I feel dehydrated I need water maybe I shouldn't read all of this it's quite a long oh yeah it's a freaking long post and I'm already 25 minutes in Yuck. I don't, I hate, I have like some misophonia, like when I hear licking and like certain things are triggers, but certain sounds, especially like during school, that was like really hard sometimes. Like if people were like tapping pens and smacking gum and eating apples and stuff in class, like that would fucking drive me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think my dog needs to go out, but where was I in this? Anyway, I think because this post is so important and it's about like autism and it's about my signs and and everything and it goes on and on and on and I'm going to be able to stop and like kind of elaborate on things and then I think even in the comments I, uh, let's see. Zena, oh my god, she's, I thought she was getting better, and now she's, poor girl, I don't know what's going on, I shouldn't be acting mad, it's just that I've been taking her out to go, and she just won't go to the bathroom, like, that's probably a sign she should be going to the vet, it's just, like, I don't, we'll have to figure it out. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna come back to this, and I, maybe I'll just come back to it when, after my walk, but on the other hand, this is 20 seven minutes in maybe I'll finish it today and not post both at the same time that's probably a good idea okay bye bye I just discovered some new freaking thing that I never noticed about myself but it's completely silent in here and I don't know if you can hear that, but like I can hear the freaking, it's like the bones in my neck, like rubbing together or something like, oh my God, <laughs> my dog hates me. <laughs> she loves me and she's like very protective, but it's just funny that she keeps sighing every time I talk. She's like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you can can hear it probably but yeah ew like I already have like one crunchy knee one hip issue and like now this like and I you know like I don't know I don't know about my fibromyalgia diagnosis like for me it was almost like a process of elimination like they're just like you don't have MS you don't have lupus you don't have this and then they're like fibromyalgia and it's like <sighs> It was kind of almost like fibromyalgia, like, okay, like, off you go. Like, they didn't tell me, they didn't really, like, help me, like, learn about it, not even a freaking pamphlet, nothing. So it was like, okay, like, <laughs> nothing we can do, bye. And actually, well, I have another story about that. Probably another day I'll have to have, like, a fibromyalgia, like, whole video, but, um... Like, sometimes I'm wondering now if it's, like, it kind of links or sounds like a lot of different things, like, or, I don't know, but most recently, like, the, what is it called? Ehlers EDS? Like, that kind of sounds a lot like it, and then, uh, lupus like I do have a lot of redness under this and um 
like you wouldn't believe the color of my face when I'm not wearing cover up and I'm not wearing concealer today that's why you can see a lot worse <laughs> skin but um I don't know I just have bad rosacea so I guess it's not but you know the thing is I saw the r rheumatologist is that what it's called and they like they just well I'll just quickly say it he was like you don't have MS, you don't have MS. And it was like, I never came here to tell you I have MS. I was just here to like find out what's wrong because there's obviously something wrong. And no, I have to save that for a different video because it's like very long and complicated and I have to start with this scar and then continue on and go into detail. But sometimes my fibromyalgia diagnosis is... Like, it does seem accurate, like, when I'm reading about it, like, the flares and... Oh. So... I was just mentioning about my bad experience with that, like... <sighs> I have to see a new neurologist because, um, well, I'm in a different city now, but it's been a long time since I saw him. But the thing was, I feel like now that I've talked about it, I have to at least say something about it, but I'll just quickly say that it started with this mole that I had on my face and it was like, I'd have numbness to like the top of my lip. But for me, it's like obvious. I just thought the mole had an issue because it was, it would like get infected and then it was blood and pus and I just thought it's just obvious that the inflammation is like putting like affecting the nerve from here to here but they decided that they wanted to like run a series of tests which like I'm thankful for but they did they've done everything under the sun and it was like I do have brain lesions and some doctors would say like well everyone has brain lesions and and, uh, I guess they were significant enough that they were tracking them and like in, I don't know if it was like a year period or six month period, but I've had at least three of them or three or four, I would say over the years and the lesions hadn't progressed. So the only reason that they didn't give me an MS diagnosis is because the lesions didn't progress. So like, I'm very thankful for that, but Anyway, I'm very thankful for that, but, uh, it just left me with a lot of, like, unknowns, and, like, I am very thankful, like I mentioned before, that I'm not, like, using medication, like, I feel like I should be taking medication for pain from morning to night, like, I am, I do have a lot of pain, but I'm just pushing through, and on my really bad days, I just really take it easy, and it's really hard to be active and maintain a healthy, active lifestyle, like, when you're in pain, and, uh, but when I do eliminate my food sensitivities, and I eat really well, and, like, low-carb, low-sugar, then that's when I feel, like, at my absolute best, and I don't have a flare where, but, and yeah, I will have to make another video because it's like, I have to tell you about, it just feels like when you wake up in the morning to night, like, it's very complex, just like everything else, like CPTSD and autism and it's not something you can just, and if you don't get too specific, then people won't understand, like, they'll think oh, well, I'm in pain too, or yeah, like I wake up and I don't feel the best, or, <sighs> but, um, and yeah, it's, I'm just getting distracted by the sounds about there, <laughs> um, anyway, just along with everything else, if I don't,
explain enough, then I really want people to be able to grasp what I'm saying, but this is why I have to make separate videos. So back to this video. This video is about autism, and I was in the middle of reading this, so, so I didn't think my interests were different from the average person, and Oh, I said, looking back in it now, it does seem like the doctors were trying to help diagnose me with autism. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> like about my special interests. I'm just like, no, not really. <laughs> but, and, uh, but I did say, also worth mentioning, not all autistic people have abnormal obsessions or interests from the average person. So... As I'm reading this, I'm just reading it how I'd like to read it and how I speak, but I'm going to show you right now what it is like to mask because I've had to mask my whole life, whether it be at school or jobs and serving especially. <laughs> Everyone has to mask when you're serving like you have. Well, no, some, I don't know. <laughs> I just, over the, some people are over the top and I was kind of like one of those people to just be friendly and but I think it would like increase my energy and then it I felt like it would make people happier like depending who but <laughs> help my tips and whatever like I got a lot of awesome compliments over the years with serving and it did like help with my confidence and a whole bunch of things but okay <coughs> oh so I'm gonna read this this is going to make me laugh. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. It's been a while since I like really had to. But um, I used to watch m movies and TV shows on repeat, especially as a child. And even today, I'd prefer to see a movie I've watched a million times over pretty much all mainstream and popular movies and shows. I haven't watched any of... Oh, wait. It would just feel so sick and phony. I don't even know if that's exactly how I would do it. But, you know, like where you're just... I'm going to try again. But um, I haven't watched any of the popular TV series like Breaking Bad, G.O.T., How I Met Your Mother, Stranger Things, and The Walking Dead. Pop culture has never been that important to me. Like the Kardashian crap. <laughs> Oh my god. Sorry, don't come for me. I'm just... <laughs> it's just... <laughs> anyway, um... Extremely shy as a child and uncomfortable in new environments, especially meeting new people. But once comfortable, I was able to be myself. This is lessened with age, but I still have a heart... I... Okay, when I'm actually reading it like that I can't even my brain's not computing the words so I'm just reading but <laughs> okay I have to stop so anyway that's just a little example and I <laughs> I'm gonna make myself laugh when I read that back or listen but before posting but anyway this is lesson lessened with age and I still have a hard time communicating well in large gatherings I'm usually completely overstimulated or can't hear properly so <laughs> I'm feeling anxiety calling Kardashian crap lately everyone's ah <laughs> anyway um I don't want to get on to that because I will like go on a big long spiel about it and I you know I'm sure they do a lot of great things I just have never and it's not even just them like I haven't really like latched on to any sort of celebrity show reality shows and things um or keep up to date with them and like like know their birthdays and this and like I kind of that whole obsession about birthdays and star signs and astrology probably ended around high school once I once no one else thought that was cool so and I was just more focused on well 
I was babysitting at a young age and then I was in school and then I started working and then I was always hanging out with friends and I hardly had enough time to even study, never mind like memorizing birthdays and <laughs> I probably would have got into other things along that line, but if I had no social life, but I did thankfully, not that I didn't struggle a lot, like I mean, when, but a lot of autistic people have, do have friends and long term friendships and not all, like I have struggled endlessly and I've like lost a lot of friendships and due to my trauma and my autism, like in combination and just, and that's not an excuse. It's just that when you're an autistic person and you're highly sensitive, some people could be highly sensitive and some people could be the complete opposite and for me I was always extremely sensitive like I could cry easily like Whew. but okay back to this um So once comfortable, I was able to be myself. This is lessened with age, but I still have a hard time communicating well in large gatherings. I'm usually completely overstimulated or can't hear properly. Like I know the average person can't probably hear very well when you're like at the bar or at whatever, but even sometimes being at like a noisy restaurant, it's like, and people would say something to me and I couldn't hear no matter how many times they said it and they would just give up and it was like that a lot. Like I just couldn't here and then I'd be like yeah like <laughs> um I've always had like an actual problem hearing like if I go like this and I go like this like snapping like I've tested my hearing and I can hear but with spoken words like in music and um there's definitely a problem but I don't know what it is and I haven't looked into it like Sometimes it's pretty overwhelming when it's like, I actually have problems from freaking head to toe. And I know we all do, but a lot of this is just probably like linked to, it does seem that a lot of autistic people do have some form of like hearing loss or, um, like, or actually deaf or, but so I kind of wonder sometimes, but I think mine has to do with maybe that I remember specifically having like really bad ear infections at times in my life and like have been forced out of the house. Like it was the Christmas parade or it was like new year's fireworks and stuff like being out in the cold, like out when I should have been resting. I know like people are going to get upset saying like, you're just bashing your family and like they did a lot for you and wah, wah, wah. but it's like oh bitch you have no idea like and I have been incredibly thankful and I've always said thank you for everything I have been given and I still am like a part of my mom's life and and I do like love her it's just really hard when it's really really hard when you're trying to heal and you know that you weren't protected and you know that your needs were per put last and that you like sometimes it honestly just feels like they would have preferred if I had been like if I killed myself or it's really dark and deep but it's just true like she, like obviously she would never admit to that and part of me knows that she probably doesn't actually feel like that and maybe she doesn't actually feel like that but all I'm saying is that as a child when you're like ignored and your needs aren't being met and you're being abused and no matter what you say or do like no one's coming to help you or make things better or like there was no physical what I've learned is that I strongly believe my mom is on the spectrum and that's why she can't really show like physical affection or we've never been like huggy people or I don't know she is with other people like we just have a we have a 
really complicated relationship due to my dad because he would just like put a wedge between us. It's like I was always speaking up against what he was doing wrong and then he would be combating me and then he would like bring my mom into it, it to like take deflect like now that I can like as I've gotten older and older and older and not even reading textbooks it's just when I'm like reflecting on the past it's like I can make a freaking web in my mind about why this is like this and this is like this and it's <laughs> someone told me that that's what happens when you do mushrooms <laughs> but I've never done them and uh I just say that, well, this is what it's like to actually be sober and, like, live and reflect and have alone time and peace and try to do the work, even though I haven't received any real in-depth therapy. Like, I was in, I'll talk about these specific programs another day, but I've been in, like, short-term programs to kind of, like, just... It's like to just get you back at work, essentially. And I don't blame them. It's just like whatever the government provides. And um, like, thankfully, I never had to go into like any like treatment where I wasn't allowed to leave on my own will or anything. It was like outpatient treatment, thank God. But oh, I'm just feel like the pressure, you know, like the pressure of all of these things. It's like, freaking. this has been therapeutic and I'm probably going to post a lot. Like I'm going to post every other day or I might even take a week break here and there. And I'm just going to be posting often and because there's just so many subjects and I also want to continue on with weight loss and let you guys follow along with that if that's what other people are mostly interested in and that's totally cool I don't expect anybody to like watch every single video and it's asking a lot of people to like <laughs> watch a whole I'm not asking anyone to do anything but it's it is asking a lot of a lot of people if like anyone does actually get interested in my content and then it's like oh they have to sit through a 30 or 50 minute video like that's kind of, uh, extreme, but I don't know. I'm sure that in the long run, like if I'm 20 videos in and some people have connected or are interested in what I'm talking about, then they'll appreciate to look back on all the others. But anyway, back to <laughs> this. So maybe every 15 minutes I should I'm going to go on a little longer with this one. So next, a lot of bad habits with my hands and I don't want to share all of them from embarrassment, but the gist of it is I just have to keep them busy, which you see stimming. And I didn't realize anything was really weird about this until my first serving job. So I was doing something with my hand when things were busy, walking back and forth from the dining room to the kitchen whenever my hands weren't full. I looked it up and thought it was alien hand syndrome, <laughs> but turns out I'm just autistic. I used to think I was just fidgety. Like when I was walking, like we're not really even supposed to leave the dining room and go to the kitchen with empty hands. You're always supposed to be like taking plates and things, but if there ever was a moment, I would like... I'm like walking and I'm like doing this with my hand or something like that. And it was just like stimming to help me in the stressful environment, like the, all the voices and commotion and the laughter and the, like the dishes and you could just like, it's when you're autistic, it's like you just take it all in at once. And so and then I have to memorize what everyone wants and is everyone's needs being met and drinks and food and desserts and <laughs> not to mention, I'm not going to say what restaurant this was, but I guess if I say any, say what I want to say, then everyone's going to know where it was. But it was like, <laughs> I, 
unlimited it wasn't a buffet but we'll say it's like a buffet at a restaurant <laughs> so it was like <laughs> oh my god it's like busting your ass off for like some people were generous tippers but <laughs> anyway unlimited everything and you're like bringing it all in like anyway um <laughs> um but that was a really good time in my life there were like a lot of awesome people at that restaurant it's just that over time the um stress of it all just like I couldn't mask anymore like once I get to this certain point I can't physically like or, well, it was more than just that, actually. And usually a lot of the time it had nothing to do with the customers. Like, I could have continued serving if there weren't, like, internal problems. Like, co-workers not treating me fairly. Or Most of the people were really awesome there. But some people, it was like, there was bullying. And then there was um, just, like, this time in particular. Um, anyway, no, I'm not going to talk. So, heightened senses, smell, taste, texture, sound, sight. I could elaborate on each one, but this post would be ten times longer, which is true. I have, like, a heightened sense of smell, and, um, I used to be, like, a picky eater as a kid, and textures even now, but, like, specifically when I was a child, like, I couldn't wear certain clothing and I hated socks and and anytime I'm like at the store I'd like brush Peth's clothing and I like had to feel what it was like and um I wish I could think of all the things right now but my brain's getting pretty overloaded but I definitely lots of issues with textures like good and bad like some textures are really awesome but like I don't like velvet and oh god styrofoam it's like oh I could just feel it in my teeth when it's like rubbing on concrete or something <laughs> but anyway um sounds oh god well I was saying a little bit about misophonia like I believe that's how it's said um just and sometimes it's I think I have heard this recently, probably in like the Shane Dawson podcast or something that it sometimes it's the people closest to you. Like I didn't have that problem with sounds with like certain people eating with like strangers, like, but it's like with my mom or something like, or just like little mannerisms and, but, uh, I don't know. Um, I really do hate that one because it's like I, because that is like something that probably my dad had a problem with. And like when I was a kid, I felt like I wasn't even allowed to make noise. Like as a kid, like I couldn't, and I wasn't allowed to ask questions. Like he would always say, geez, you ask a lot of questions. Like eventually he said that to me where it's like I wasn't learning and he didn't teach me shit like they never taught me to tie my shoes or ride a bike or homework nothing like ever and there was a time that I asked him to help me with French homework because he was French and we never <laughs> learned French as a family and he just wrote it all in his own writing and was like what the hell like I was like in grade three or something like can you just freaking help me like he was completely impatient and wouldn't Ugh. but anyway um anyway I know he definitely had a problem with sounds but like to the the max level like me I had a home daycare and sounds did not bother me because like <laughs> The only thing with the kids, I would try to teach them to, like, chew with their mouth closed, but when they're so young, like, they can't even breathe through their nose when they're, like, chewing through their mouth, so it was only, like, the older kids, but anyway, um, just because, you know, it's not, like, for me only personally, it's just, like, a good habit to teach them so that going out into the world one day, they're not, like 
chewing, like, <laughs> smacking their food. And anyway, um, maybe that's just something that was, like, really instilled into me and I didn't realize, like, that that was important until I had a daycare. But I hate saying something negatively like that about my daycare when there's actually so much positive, but I want to keep daycare as a separate video as well because it's just like it was really awesome and even the bad parts about it were awesome and the only reason I'm not doing it now is because um I moved from like the city to the country and it's like this really long story and now I'm in a trailer so I can't exactly do daycare especially in here I wouldn't <laughs> That would be pretty brutal, like, just, they wouldn't have the freedom and the vibration in here and everything, it would be pretty, anyway, um, so sounds and sight even, like, I have, I had 2020 vision for a long time and I think it's like 2030 or something, but and at one point it was 2015 or something, like something even better than 2020, if that's even possible. And, but I do apparently have two stigmatisms and I don't know what that even means, but they could have given me the lowest pres prescription eyeglasses, like if I wanted them. And I said no, because I just thought that if I started wearing glasses, then it might lead to me needing them somehow in some way. I don't know. <laughs> But if somebody, yeah. God, I have so much wrong with me, like, seriously. But at least I can laugh about it. But if somebody wants to comment down below, what is astigmatism? What does it mean? And, like, should I get the glasses? <laughs> but anyway, I still have really good vision, thankfully. And sometimes I almost wonder, like, because when I ask my mom who has really bad vision, like um, I always ask her if she can see certain things from afar with her heavy duty glasses and she can't. And it's like, I can see like a, <laughs> like an eagle, like a hawk. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um, I could elaborate on each one of these. Oh yeah, I said that. So highly sensitive, especially as a child, like I did mention, well, I mean, when you have heightened senses and, but heightened in terms of being sensitive at like the comments that were made at me. And, and then once people notice that you're sensitive, like if joking around with each other in the household was normal, then I'm sure you can like recover from <laughs> or come up with your own insults quickly. But for me, it just always and it, it was never, like, usually, like, maybe by the time I got in high school, it was more like trying to poke fun at me and just to make me, or make everyone laugh. Like, some of the time it was to laugh at me, not with me. But some, as I got older, more often than not, it was not so hard. But, like, in elementary school, the kids seemed to, like, purposely try to you know how kids are, but once they notice that you're sensitive, it's like they just want to tr continue to, and at the time, yeah, it really sucked, and, but now when I think about it, I'm like, kids are kids, and who knows what their life was like at home, and, and so even, like, I will talk about how shitty things are, because it's like, you could, you could do you could teach your kids to be kinder to one another like that's something that everybody could do but I even with my friends that I made into high school and after high school and into college and the f relationships that have just grown apart or had falling outs I don't really have a lot of resentment against anybody because it's like we're we were all young